So the antitrust division for many years has been focused on competition in labor markets. And that's because there are well-documented problems where um, buyers of labor, um, employers and otherwise, can abuse their bargaining leverage relative to um, talent or labor. And there's also the problem of um, very basic monopsony, which is when um, some buyer of labor can essentially buy uh, all of the inputs or set the price of that input and um, essentially make it not worthwhile to continue to produce that input. And so AI, as we understand, um, has the potential to um, hoover up a lot of creative expression um, that may have taken um, many hours, right? Imagine a newspaper article that um, took many hours of research, interviews, um, editing, and polishing before it is ultimately a published piece that is fed into um, training data that ultimately trains a foundation model. Um, And imagine that on a scale um, that is sufficient to train a foundation model. Um, It is possible that AI may present the situation where um, creative expression is no longer um, something that people are incentivized to do. And um, setting aside that that is a profound loss for society, um, it is also a um, very basic antitrust problem. And so we are concerned about the potential for AI to essentially disincentivize creative expression, whether it's in newspapers, um, the news media more broadly, um, songwriting, music, film, um, and other uh, uh, talent-intensive um, services and goods. Some harms uh, to content creators from the use of AI um, may include, um, you know, ultimately a system that does not properly compensate creators for um, their finished works, um, both in the first instance and in certain derivative uses of that uh, work. And so um, you might take the example of a journalist who produces a single article. Um, that single article um, may be the product of um, many hours of research and interviews and um, careful drafting and subsequent editing before it is then um, made available to be um, scraped potentially um, and and fed into uh, AI or an AI-related um, product or service. And so if AI essentially makes it so that um, that work is not properly compensated, it's not hard to believe that future generations of journalists might not be um, incentivized to pursue journalism. And that is a profound loss for society, but it's also fundamentally an antitrust problem. Um, The antitrust laws have a lot to say about that. Um, Concerns about labor are um, present in the um, floor speech and debate um, before the Sherman Act is ultimately passed in 1890. And so it's really incumbent on all of us as antitrust enforcers to be concerned about this um, modern problem facing workers um, in content creation and expression. As an antitrust enforcer, um, it's really kind of an academic question whether we need an overarching or comprehensive regulator um, to monitor AI. The fact is that AI is here today and it is having an effect on the market today. And so as law enforcers, it is critical that we properly understand AI, um, that we get in-house expertise that can help us in our um, competition policy setting, in our investigative work, in our um, litigations, and that we use all of the tools that are available to us today, um, irrespective of what Congress might ultimately decide to do um, up to and including uh, the creation of you know, a comprehensive or overarching regulator. As a department official, I am not uh, 
able to comment on uh, proposed legislative solutions, but it does occur to me that um, there are myriad competition statutes um, beyond the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act, which are perhaps best known. Um, but the United States Code is dotted uh, with antitrust and competition statutes. And so um, we need to be using all of those tools. And we also need to be understanding adjacent areas of law. Um, there are some problems where um, a more robust understanding of um, the intellectual property regime is going to be very helpful to us. Um, in fact, there are um, Section 2 of the Sherman Act cases that are predicated on fraud on the patent office, for example. Um, we need to be understanding corporate governance and, again, these adjacent areas that can really help complement and fill in our understanding of how markets are supposed to operate when they are unencumbered by um, concentration problems, competition problems, and other threats to the proper functioning and competitive process um, that we like to see in markets.